At CES 2023, Samsung showed off a micro LED display panel spanning just 50 inches diagonally. This means that they have been able to shrink down micro LED displays considerably compared to the 100 plus inch panels that they showed off at CES a couple of years back. This also means that Samsung is extremely close to making micro LED displays commercially available to the general public. Yes, my friends, micro LED TVs, the future of display technology is almost here. So in this video, I'm going to explain you exactly why micro LEDs are considered as the true successor to OLEDs and the future of display technology going forward. Hey guys, Diptesh here and welcome back to TechStation365. Wish you all a very happy new year. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. All right, guys, this video is going to be an educated video. So stick around till the end. There's a lot to learn. So with that said, let's get right into it. So before I explain you about micro LEDs, it's important to give you some context because without the knowledge of general display technology, you won't be able to understand the importance of micro LEDs or the problems that micro LEDs is claiming to solve. All right, so display panels can be classified into two broad categories, LED LCD based panels that need a backlight and number two, self emissive panels that don't require a backlight. LED LCD panels include TN, IPS and VA, while self emissive panels include OLEDs and upcoming micro LEDs. You might have also heard about mini LEDs, but let me tell you, mini LEDs is not a panel type. I'll come back to mini LEDs in a bit. Now, how these various display panels differ from each other needs to be a different video of its own. But in brief, the LED LCD display panels are mainly differentiated among themselves by the way the crystals twist and turn to produce the colors and contrast. The mechanism of the crystals affect the characteristics of these LED LCD panels. Self emissive panels like OLEDs do not require a backlight and instead uses organic emissive materials that can produce their own light once they are electrically charged. That's why the name organic light emitting diode. Now, since OLEDs do not require a backlight and individual pixels can produce their own light, OLEDs have some major advantages over LED LCDs. So let's talk about those. Number one is contrast. Contrast is the biggest perceptible difference between OLEDs and LED LCDs. OLEDs essentially have infinite contrast as OLEDs can display true black by turning off individual pixels. Whereas LED LCDs just cannot display true black as there is always some backlight leakage through the crystals. No matter what the LED LCD panel, the crystals just cannot completely block the backlight to display true black. In terms of contrast levels among LED LCDs, TN panels are the worst, IPS panels are better than TN, while VA panels are significantly better than IPS in native contrast ratio, but OLED contrast is still way better than VA. Now here comes mini LEDs. Mini LEDs are not a panel type. Instead, they are an advanced form of backlight to enable what is known as full array local dimming to enhance the contrast of LED LCDs. Mini LEDs are essentially extremely small LEDs and they can be split into different backlight zones which can then turn on and off as a zone together to enhance contrast. For example, Samsung uses mini LED backlight in their latest VA TVs, which they call as Neo QLEDs and also in their Odyssey Neo G series of gaming monitors. Now, even the best 4K LED LCD TVs or monitors have at max 2000 local dimming zones. But you cannot compare that with a 4K OLED TV, which essentially has 8 million local dimming zones as individual pixels themselves can turn on and off to produce pure black. Now don't get me wrong, Samsung's Neo QLED TVs and you know, Odyssey Neo G series of gaming monitors are incredible for watching movies, playing games in HDR. You know, they have great brightness, they have got great contrast, but they still cannot produce the absolute pure image quality produced by an OLED TV. As even these high-end LED LCD monitors with local dimmings suffer from some amount of blooming or backlight blooming caused by complicated scenes where even 2000 local dimming zones are not enough. Maybe one day when we'll have like 10,000 local dimming zones in a monitor, maybe then, you know, these LED LCDs can somewhat reach the level of OLED, uh, you know, pure black or that pure image quality, but not yet. All right, so that was about contrast. What about colors? 
In terms of colors, OLEDs still have the edge over the best LED LCDs. For example, Samsung's Quantum Dot Infused OLEDs or QD OLEDs, which they released a year back, can cover over 90% of the REC 2020 color space, which is used for HDR, while the best LED LCD panels, also infused with Quantum Dots, cover about 78% of the REC 2020 color space. That said, when it comes to DCI-P3 color space, IPS and OLEDs can both cover 99% of it, while the latest VA panels from Samsung can also cover up to 95% of the P3 color space. TN panels though fall quite far behind in this category. Okay, so what about off-axis viewing or viewing angles? Well, OLEDs are again exceptionally good in this department. In the LED LCD section, IPS monitors and TVs produce the best viewing angles. They are actually quite comparable to OLEDs. VA panels are quite a bit worse than IPS panels when it comes to viewing angles. In fact, VA panels are quite average when it comes to viewing angles. And you know, TN panels are the worst in terms of viewing angles. Lastly, let's talk about response times, which is very important to gamers. Let's start with LED LCD panels. Earlier, TN panels used to have the best response times and were the primary choice for esports players but IPS panels caught up and also provide very good response times. VA panels used to have the worst and the slowest response times, but Samsung's continued innovation with their VA TVs have resulted in huge improvements to VA response times. Samsung's latest VA panels in their Odyssey G7 and above models have some of the fastest response times among all LED LCD panels, even faster than IPS and TN at times. So in 2023, the latest TN, IPS and VA panels at high refresh rates all have comparable response times in between 2 milliseconds and 4 milliseconds, which is great. Now what about OLEDs? Well my friends, OLED TVs and monitors have pixel response times of 0.1 milliseconds to 0.5 milliseconds, which is almost instantaneous and at least 4 times faster than the fastest LED LCD panels and the OLED response times don't get worse at lower refresh rates, whereas LED LCD panels response times become worse and slower at lower refresh rates. Fun fact, do you know that CRTs had the best response times and the only digital display technology that matched CRT response times is OLED. So till now it seems like OLEDs are perfect, they are invincible, they don't have any disadvantages. Well then why are there so few OLED TVs and monitors in the wild? What is the need for micro LED in the future? I mean apart from the small OLED display in your phone, how often have you seen OLED TVs and monitors around you? I'm sure extremely rarely. Well my friends, even OLEDs have certain disadvantages compared to the traditional LED LCDs. And number one is OLED burn-in. I'm sure you've heard about OLED burn-in at least once. Since OLEDs use organic materials to emit light, they eventually degrade and burn into the actual panel causing image retention, which obviously ruins your TV or monitor experience. This happens when you have persistent elements on your display frequently like the map of your game or scoreboard or channel logo for a long time. Now I must say that modern OLEDs are extremely resistant to burn-in. The risk of burn-in is extremely minimal these days. In fact, if you don't know, Samsung never promoted OLED TVs. Even though they made OLED displays for smartphones since the beginning, they never made OLED TVs before. However, in 2022, Samsung's display division came out with their own OLED panels infused with quantum dots, which they're calling as QD OLEDs. QD OLEDs are so resistant to burn-in that Dell Alienware QD OLED gaming monitor comes with three-year burn-in warranty, which shows how confident Dell is in Samsung's QD OLED tech when it comes to burn-in resistance. However, no matter what, even QD OLEDs are susceptible to some risk of permanent burn-in. And that's why the other point in which OLEDs are weaker at compared to their LED LCD counterparts is brightness. Or shall I say, full screen sustained brightness. OLED displays tend to have lower brightness than their LED LCD counterparts. For example, Samsung's QD OLED S95B TV has groundbreaking OLED brightness but it still falls slightly short of Samsung's own QA90B's overall brightness, which is an LED LCD TV. Also, OLED TVs tend to drop brightness gradually when it comes to showing bright scenes for a long time, like let's say test match cricket or golf. This is again done to prevent those organic LEDs from degrading. 
Overall, OLEDs have improved a lot with regards to burn-in resistance and Samsung's QD OLED panels are extremely resistant to burn-ins. However, OLED panels in general are still suited in rooms with controlled lighting and not the best choice for keeping in rooms where there's a lot of ambient light and you're watching something like bright sports. And finally, the cost. OLED panel manufacturing has improved by leaps and bounds and it is continuing to improve. In fact, I think in 2023, this is the year when OLED panels and you know in TVs and monitors is finally going to be mainstream. However, OLED TVs and you know monitors still continue to be only for the ultra premium range. So essentially sustained brightness for long time and burn-in are the only two major disadvantages of OLED TVs and monitors. And even this is improving rapidly. And this is why OLEDs are considered as a major step up over traditional LED LCDs. But this is where micro LEDs come in. Micro LED promises to completely eliminate OLED's weakness of burn-in and sustained brightness. Micro LED replaces those organic LEDs with inorganic LEDs which are extremely small. This removes the issue of degradation and dramatically improves brightness and sustained brightness. These LEDs can of course produce their own light and don't require a backlight which is why just like OLEDs, micro LEDs can also produce true blacks. So micro LEDs have already completely solved the problem of lower brightness and burn-in in OLEDs. Samsung is also claiming pixel response times in the range of nanoseconds, which is just unimaginable. Samsung is basically clubbing these micro LEDs together to create modules, which are then clubbed together to create a display. So essentially, micro LED display panels are also having the ability to be resolution free and size free as they can be scaled up and down according to the requirements. Just mind blowing. And guess what? There are absolutely no bezels. You cannot spot any seam in between the connected modules. Now, Samsung is constantly making these LEDs smaller and smaller, and they've been able to shrink down the size of these LEDs to such a level that they are now able to make a 50 inch micro LED panel with a resolution of 4K or 8 million pixels. Can you imagine how small those individual LEDs are that they're able to cram 8 million of these LEDs into a 50 inch panel? Guys, I'm making these things sound very simple in simple language. However, this is anything but simple. There has been a lot of innovation and millions and millions of dollars spent into research and development of micro LEDs. Now, the only problem is the manufacturing process. Like any new technology, the manufacturing process is still at its infancy and whatever micro LED panels that are available for sale are at insanely high prices, like I think over 20,000 US dollars, something like that. And it's like beyond the reach of even the ultra luxury people. So yeah, just like any new technology, you know, the manufacturing process will continue to improve and, you know, it will eventually come to a level where they're able to produce enough panels and they're able to get enough yield to lower the cost. So yeah, it's just a waiting game now. So that was all about micro LEDs and why it is considered as the true success to OLEDs and the future of display technology. I hope all of you learned something and if you have, then please hit the like button and make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications. That's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.